Villa and Burnham City to be under one roof United in the first place. Big slow sash trade. One of these buggers. Come hurtling the walls like that. It was me and Mick. I thought, who's it going to do? All of a sudden, it hit me right there. A 100 strong mix of Bromley hooligans and National Front had steamed the venue and were causing havoc at the front of the Cockney Rejects packed out gig at the Cedar House, Birmingham. Beer cans and bottles were being launched as the rowdy crowd turned hostile due to the Cockney Rejects' love for West Ham and their appearance on top of the Pops singing forever blowing bubbles after the 1980 FA Cup final victory. The Rejects were no shrinking violet. Born in East London Custom House, brothers Jeff aka Stinky Turner and Mickey were both good unbeaten amateur boxers as kids and were both willing and able to live up to their notoriety by fighting with any fans who put it on them. Stinky Turner's love for West Ham was what inspired him to put the Hammers forefront of the punk rock era. There was also a skinhead following and elements involved with the National Front, but contrary to some beliefs, the rejects did not want to associate themselves with the Front and actively fought against and rejected the overtures of such movements. The 80s was a very violent and politically charged period with race wars sparking up across the country. As the rowdy crowd of NF and hooligans at the front got more volatile and aggressive launching missiles and goading the front men of the rejects to fight them, Mickey, true to form, jumped down and began trading punches with the skinheads at the front. The audience, that just going smash, crash, bosh, just going right up. So that Knocking several on their arses, according to their manager at the time, Gary Bushell. The media suggested that it was Aston Villa and Birmingham hooligans combining with the NF to launch the attack on the rejects. But at that time, it was Birmingham who had a strong wave of their lads who were also connected to the front. The C crew, who was one of Villa's main mobs at the time, were mostly made up of black and Asian lads and regularly went hunting for the front, which I will go into in another video. The truth is maybe somewhere in between, but there was a strong NF following and Birmingham contingent who were hell bent on smashing the Cedar Club, Cockney rejects and the ICF up that night. As Mickey traded punches and his brother Stinky joined him, a heavy glass ashtray spiralled over smashing Mickey and cutting him badly and things really kicked off then. Outnumbered five over one, the rejects ICF and their fans went berserk smashing into the front and the Brummy attackers and drove them back across the dance floor with no mercy shown. Blood, snot and teeth went flying as fists, heads, homemade weapons, bottles and cans were smashed into each other by the warring parties. The owner of the Cedar Club was Eddie Futrell, king of the Birmingham clubs. A very successful businessman from a large family in the city who allegedly once drove the Craze and the Lambriano brothers out of the country's second biggest city. He was known as a man who ruled his empire with an iron fist. And although not a criminal, he had a very heavy security team to look after his clubs. But even those lumps made up of ex-boxers, wrestlers and hard-faced doormen were powerless to stop the vicious battle that was spilling out across the dance floor. When the madness quelled and the rioting Brummy hooligans and NF of had departed and left the hall looking like a battlefield with furniture, bottles, glasses and people smashed and broken and Grant Fleming described the night's violence as the worst he had ever seen. Mickey was taken to hospital to have nine stitches put in his head from the glass ashtray but had to make a sharp exit through a window as some of the Birmingham firm came tooled up to pay him a visit. They were none too happy that some of their pals had been bashed up by the rejects and their fans and wanted to settle the odds. They didn't manage to catch Mickey, but their lads at the gig had managed to nick the band's equipment to the tune of two grand, a pretty penny in the 80s. The next day, a fuming Mickey went on the search in one of the vans to try and find some likely candidates that could point him in the right direction to find their gear. It was a thankless task, but he did bump into some skinheads who he took his frustrations out on with an iron bar and got a malicious wounding charge to add to the band's woes. It would begin the downfall for the band touring as at every gig they would have had rival fans looking to kill them and the police shut them down. The crazy night would go down in pop rock history as the Battle of Birmingham. So that was the infamous Battle of Birmingham. A few points I'm going to give my take on. One, the numbers at the gig. Two, the Birmingham and Villa lads combining allegation. Three, the Mickey arrest. I did some research on the event, which was a few years before my time, but the 80s was a very volatile time. One, in the interview with the lads, they say around 200 hooligans from Birmingham 
and Villa, and skinheads attack them. Bushell says in an interview a year later, around 100 attackers, then in a video said 30 or 40. So I think the numbers are subjective, but all good stories get embellished over time. Two, in the reports I've read, there's no mention of hooligans, just punks and skinheads. It would be interesting to hear the take of anyone connected with Birmingham and Villa who remembers those days to see the truth in the stories. Three, the Mickey arrest was suggested in interviews and reports that he went vigilante and got some payback. But in the news report, it says three teenagers got bashed, one a girl. I don't know if they were involved in the previous attack on the rejects or not, but he ended up getting off without a prison sentence. This punk era is not my cup of tea. I was more into the clubbing and football scene in the 90s and 2000s, but it's interesting to research and see how volatile it was back then. I hope you enjoyed this bonus edition. Look forward to hearing your feedback as usual. Uh, I actually had to fight anyone once and then about 16 of them decimated 40 skinheads who were causing a lot of trouble.